trajectory and so forth. So in this example, basically we have is f of x equals negative x squared minus 10x minus 30, right? Now, obviously, what I told you in the last class period, to go ahead and graph this, what we could do is go ahead and complete the square. And if you guys remember, we did that process, the five, four or five steps, right? Group the terms, factor out the negative 1, do b divided by 2 squared, add, subtract, and then you write it in vertex form, and you can graph it. And there's nothing wrong with that. And this is a perfectly um, fine equation to go and do that for. However, if you have trouble with completing the square, or you find this method easier to do, then you can absolutely do this uh, method for all functions as well. So if I was going to graph this without writing it in vertex form, you guys can see that this is in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. right? So we previously said, again, we could rewrite this in vertex form using completing the square. That's what we did last homework. This homework, though, is saying, hey, you know what? We can leave it in this format and still find the axis symmetry in the vertex. So to find the axis symmetry, the formula we used was x equals opposite of b divided by 2 times a. So please remember that b is the number in front of your linear term. It's not x. There's no x with your b. b is the number that's being multiplied. So b is negative 10. So the opposite of negative 10 is positive 10 times 2 times a, which you can see in this case, a is uh, negative 1. So therefore, I have 2 over negative 2. I'm sorry, 10 over negative 2, which equals negative 5. Therefore, the axis symmetry is x equals negative 5. So on your graph, all you simply need to do to graph this is go to negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then create a nice little vertical line. Because remember, when, graphing vert when we have graphing x equals negative 5, that creates a vertical line. Now remember this axis symmetry, this is going to be the line that the graph is symmetrical about. Whatever is on the right-hand side of this graph, you can flip it, and you'll get it on the, well, the right hand, you'll get it on the left-hand side. All right. Now the next thing to do is find the vertex. And I gave you guys a kind of a um, complicated fun uh, function notation for the vertex. The vertex is basically the coordinate point opposite of b divided by 2 times a, comma, f of opposite of b divided by 2 times a. However, in this course, they didn't give us time to really talk about functions. So if you guys remember function notation, when you have f of something, that basically means you're plugging that value in for the function. All right? But they didn't leave us time to discuss functions, so I'm just going to use it using a table of values. Remember that the vertex lies on the axis symmetry. Yes? Always. Every single time you guys are graphing, the vertex was always on the axis symmetry. So what I explained basically up here is the vertex is a coordinate point. And the coordinate point has the same x value as your axis symmetry. So it's negative 5. So if I know the x value of the vertex and I need to find the y value, all I simply need to do is plug negative 5 in for x to find the output value, or fx, or this could x or y. Or in this case, since it's a function, we're using f of x instead of y. But basically, you just plug in negative 5 into your function. So if I do that, f of negative 5, which is basically the function notation for that, I get negative negative 5 squared minus 10 times negative 5 minus 30. Does everybody see my work? Huh? Yeah, x equals negative 5. So I'm plugging in negative 5 in for x. Okay. So negative 5 squared is negative 5 times negative 5, which is 25. 25 times negative 1 is going to be a negative 25. Negative 10 times negative 5 is going to be a negative 50. And then minus 30. So oh, I'm sorry, that's a positive, right? So therefore, that gives me a negative 5 negative 5 comma negative 5, right? So now, this coordinate point, negative 5, negative 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is now my vertex, correct? Um, also, uh, we need to determine, does the graph open up or does the graph open down? Down, because a is negative, right? a is the same thing as vertex form, a times x minus h squared plus k. The value of a tells you the same thing. It's negative. So we know the graph is going to open down. So therefore, if the graph opens down, is my vertex going to be the highest point or the lowest point? Highest. highest. So therefore, we can call this vertex 
the maximum point. So when they're asking you if it's a max or a minimum, you just got to determine what the vertex is and if the graph opens up or opens down. Um, the next thing is we need to determine the rest of the points right, to make the graph. Now, if you guys understand that A is 1, is there any compression or stretching? No. So in reality, if you guys remember the parent graph, you're going over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. In this case, you're going down. So you're technically going over 1, down 1, over 2, down 4. Yes? If that doesn't make sense, the best thing that I told you guys is once we have the axis symmetry, is just choose points to the left or to the right and then graph them. All right, so you could plug in these two points, because they're right next to the axis symmetry, plug them into your function and figure out what the y-coordinates are. However, I can tell you that since there's no compression, it's just going to follow that pattern of over 1, down 1, over 1, down 2. So six, seven, eight. I can go over 1, down 1, over 2, down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's what the graph looks on the right-hand side. I can now apply the axis of symmetry to reflect the points on the left-hand side. Anybody have any questions or what I did? No? And remember, guys, again, you could just fill in this table. Just do f of negative 6. See what that value is. Negative 36 plus 60 minus 30. So at negative 6, what do you get? Negative 6. Was that point correct? Yes, it was. And then you could have done that point and then just reflect them over. It works the same way. OK? Oh, let's talk about domain and range real quick. And then I'll answer your question if it doesn't already answer your question. Uh, the next thing we need to also remember is domain range, which we'll go over again in, again in this class period. Please remember domain is the set of all x values, meaning what are all the numbers you can plug in? Is there, is there infinite many numbers that we can plug in? Can we, go to more ne can we go to larger negative and even to positive numbers? Yeah. Any number here, we can always plug it into this formula. And you can see this graph is always going to expand. So the domain is all real numbers, or sometimes we'll write it as negative infinity to infinity. However, the range is the set of all y values. So what are all the possible output values that we could get? Well, the best way I like to do is just look at the graph. This graph, the y values, the lowest y value that it's going to go down to is negative infinity. But the highest y coordinate that is on there, you need to look at the vertex, which is negative 5. So we'd say the range is from negative infinity to negative 5. Since negative 5 is actually a y coordinate, we're going to use the bracket. Infinity is not actually a point or a value, so that's why we use parentheses. Everybody see the